He didn't. He did. Oh, he did not call you about coming today. Because he asked me to pick him up, I told him I couldn't. I told him he was going for he ain't going straight to work, I'm not going back. Oh, I would have brought him back. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Hamdan Kathir and Tayyib and Mubarak and Fihi. Kama Yuhibu Lahu Tabaraka wa Ta'ala wa Yaruba. Wa Sallallahu wa Sallam wa Baraka ala Nabiyina Muhammadan. وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه إن شاء الله تعالى today we're going to return back to having our our class on the Aqidah to explanation of the Aqidah of Ibn Abi Zayd al-Qayrawani From Tunis, the city of Qayrawan That's where the Sheikh is from and we are in our fourth class Alhamdulillah And before we start the class we have eight questions And these questions are in relation to what we covered last class And the class before that because I never asked questions from the last class The first question is what is the difference between shabi and nawirun? What is the difference between shabi? I'm gonna translate them first. Shabi, it means similar, similarities, and nawir means equals. So, what's the difference between them? I want to know the difference. Fadda. Difference, same means like. Same Go ahead. Exactly, I kind of gave it away when I said that To be, when we make tashbih Resemblance of, a, of Allah to his creation That's partially Haramun, not permissible And when we say Allah We make, give him nudara Or nudair Plural of nadir That's saying, yani musawa Musawa <clears throat> Saying something is equal to Allah Meaning it shares with Allah in totality It shares with Allah totality in His names and attributes and qualities And Allah negates all of that from Himself As He says لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٌ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٌ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ Allah Ta'ala says there's nothing to be compared to be similar to Him Look how Allah Ta'ala said that again Because that's the kaf al-tashbih The kaf is for making comparison Allah says, Laysa, there is not kamithlihi. Ka, there's nothing to be compared, mithlihi, to be like him. So that destroys temthilin. Temthil is similar to tashbih. But some of the ulama said they did the same separation. Temthil bi ma'ana musawiya. Taswiya, to make something equal. Whereas tashbih is always partial resemblance. But if we just left, if you see some of Ahlul Ilm in their books, if they mention Tashbih by itself, Yashtamilu ala ma'ana nadir wa ma'ana tamthil. It is inclusive to both meanings. Okay? Because this is the reason why some of Ahlul Ilm said, Kalimatani. Mutaradifatani That these two words are synonymous to one another That's a mawqaf Min ahl al-ilm There's a position from the scholars of Aqid of, 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 of creed But again Other ulama has said no there is a difference And the proof is when they're mentioned together Like we have uh, the qa'idah Ida ijtama'a iftaraqa Wa ida ida infarada Ijtama'a which means that whenever a word that is by itself, it includes the meanings of the words that are similar to it in meaning. But when a word is gathered with other words that are similar to it, they all, they all have their individual meanings. And that's a well-known principle in the religion of Islam. It's like the term Iman, Ihsan, and Islam. When they individually mention, it's inclusive to the other two. But when they all mention at the same time, they all have their specific meaning. Like in the Hadith of Jibril, 
When the Messenger of Allah وسلم, was asked by Jibril, Akhbirni an al Islam, inform me about Islam, wa akhbirni an al Iman, inform me what is Iman, wa akhbirni an al Ihsan, and inform me what is excellence, Ihsan. So they all have a meaning that's specific to it because they collect it. But if they by themselves, they all include the other. This is why we find the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam many places in his Sunnah when he defines Islam, he would include Iman in it, in his definition. Or he defines Iman, he includes Islam with it. Because Islam is that, when he separated in their meanings, Islam is the outer actions. Iman is the belief inside. And Ihsan is combining the two and taking it to another level. Okay, so when they you'll find that it has mentioned both, and Allah likewise in the Quran. Now, so that was the first question. Second question: How do we know Allah is ilahun wahidun, is one deity? I gave a hint. We mentioned two ways. What are those two ways? Allahu Akbar. The first way is fitri, the natural belief in the oneness of Allah. The second way. Is aql is intellectually proven, okay? And we gave evidence for both. We're not going to do that here. And then the next thing we mentioned, the next question, and you know, you sisters can always send your answers upstairs. Who's present? And does uh, does Allah have an origin, asl? And does He have a subsidiary, a fara, that branch from Him? Now. Oh, that's a good answer. He said if he had an origin, he wouldn't be God. He said it in a British way. He said God. That's how the British say it. <laughs> uh, uh, that's correct. Uh, now, the brother answered, if he had an usul, or origin, and if he had a furar, a subsidiary, meaning that which branched from him, lineage-wise, then he wouldn't be Allah. He wouldn't be God. He wouldn't be the Ilahun Wahid. He wouldn't be the only deity because uh, also uh, for origin requires equality, similarities. Right. Having uh, that which branched from you requires the same thing comparison, equality, similarities. That leads us to question number four what is needed to have an origin? What is needed for a person to have an origin? That, that's true, but that's not what we're looking for. Have parents. Thank you. You have to have parents. A mother and a father can't exist without a parent. Descendants and descendants. Yeah, so no, that's for origin. You need parents. What's your origin? Your mother and your father. Right. That's what we mentioned in the class. Your origin is your mother and your father. What's the origin of mankind? Adam wa Hawa. Right. right? So, what's the origin of Adam? Mud and... Clay or mud or just water and mud, water and, and clay and dirt. What's the origin of Hawa? Adam. Rib. Adam. Rib. <laughs> like the, he said that. Rib. And <laughs> uh, Okay. Good answer. Part of question number four. And what is needed to have a subsidiary branch from us? Also. Well, we already said also. I said subsidiary. Subsidiary is what comes from you. Children You have to have offsprings Exactly And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Tabarra'a min, minhuma Allah is free from both of those things And that's the whole thing about ikhlas Lam yalid Allah did not give Begat Ya'ani laysa lahu fara Allah doesn't have anything branching from him Yes Walam yulad And there's nothing like it unto him I mean excuse me And he did not Nor was he begotten Ya'ani laysa lahu asl Allah don't have an origin Okay, question number five. What are the three covenants that Allah took with us? يعني ما هو مواثيق الثلاثة التي أخذها الله علينا? What are the the three covenants that Allah took with us that we mentioned in the last class? The first one is, uh, am I not your Lord? Okay, he said the first covenant is when Allah swiped the back of Adam and all of his humanity. Children came, meaning the children, where everybody gonna come from, and then from their the back, meaning his sons, and then came from their back all the offsprings that 
stem from that from different races. Okay. Um, and he asked, "Am I not your Lord?" Alas to be Rabbikum. Am I not your Lord? We said, "Kalu bala." We said, "Of course." We had the shah. Kalu bala shahidina. We said, "Of course." We bear witness, and we said, "This is shahada to haliya." Lays is shahada to. Nadaria. This is a testimony that is the, the being, their state of being testified to. Not a testimony that they said with their our, our, our kawli, a testimony that's done with the mouth. Saying, I bear witness. No. Our re reality of how we, our nature bear witness the fact that there's a creator. Naturally, when we're in, the, we in ittirar, we're in a dire straits, we look above us naturally. Naturally, we, because we believe the creator is above us. All the human beings are created in this fashion. So that's the first confident. The confident when Allah smited the back of Adam. Now what you was trying to say, Shaykh? Uh, that, that's, what, that's what we talk about. That's the one we're talking about. That's based from the ayah. And we, he wasn't here, so he didn't know. That's what we quoted that as the evidence. This, this evidence... Well, see, well, I ain't get to the evidence yet, cause that's the next question. So hold that. We, we don't gave the first. That's the evidence for the first mithaq, mithaq al awwal, the first contract we made with Allah. Mithaq al fit, the mithaqun min hina ma uchida min zahri Adam zuriyata. Okay, when the sons of Adam was taken from his back, that was the first confidence. What was the second confidence? Birth, oh, that's my man. Not in the womb when you came out of the womb. The, well, you can say that. The, no, but that's 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 not the fitr. It don't put the fitr. Allah Taala puts in you to, to be born upon belief in His oneness. So both. So you got two types of fitr. You got the fitr that took place, but when when we was in alam the world of atoms. Then you got what Allah put in you. In the, in the covenant when you came out of your mother And that is We had evidence for that I'm not going to mention the evidence now That's the second contract Is when you came out of your mother Now you believe in the oneness of Allah Look how serious Allah went To kill the excuse of shirk To destroy Or ibqal to destroy a shirkiyat fil qulub, to kill all possibility of shirk fi fitr in your natural makeup. So that was what was the third covenant Allah Taala ta took with us? Mithaq al thalith. What is the third contract Allah took with us? Is that your death? No. To choose to be a Muslim or? No, you had to be here for that. Okay. What is the third covenant that Allah took with us? Taktaribu. Jawabu ka taktaribu la sawab. Dikri ka rusul. Yu karibu ka. Tu karibu ka. Walakin haqiqa. The reality is. I'm speaking Arabic. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I got an out of here. So I start speaking Arabic. Pardon me. He's close to his answer. He said. But what did you say again? Quote it again so I can translate it. Okay. He quoted an ayat and it's close. It's real close. And the ayah basically when Allah took a covenant with all of the prophets, that's a different have the mithaqul anbiya. Laysa mithaq al bashar al ammatan. It's not the covenant Allah took with the general creation of human beings. But that was a covenant specific to prophets in Surah Ta'ala Imran. This covenant that Allah Ta'ala, the third covenant, nobody else remember? We said the third covenant was the sending of prophets and messengers that's the third covenant and that is them coming establishing the proof against the creation you either they have come to establish the proof against you because you reject this, their messengership or what they've been sent with and their message or a proof for you 
because you accept it uh, by us believing in them and working by their legislation that is the third covenant that is incumbent upon every one of the son of Adams and they all got evidence for each one that we mentioned last time so that's the next question number six give a proof for each covenant had Give me an evidence for each confident. As far as the first confident, he already quoted this, so we're going to say that. Well, Allah Ta'ala mentioned, And remember when your Lord took a confident, From the sons of Adam, from their backs, Their offsprings, he took their offsprings. Right? And he caused them to bear witness against themselves. Am I not your Lord? They said, Of course, we bear witness. We bear witness. So, so that they will not be able to say on the day of judgment that we was heedless. Yani, the message didn't reach us of Tawheed, of the war of evilness for sure. They won't have that excuse. They won't say that we was heedless. They won't have that excuse because Allah put it in them. That's the evidence for the one in the Adam al Dhurra, the world of Adams, when we was smited, wiped from the back, we came out the back of Adam. Okay? That covenant we don't remember. We don't remember that covenant. So Allah Ta'ala put it in again when you was born. What's the evidence for that covenant? We gave two. I have another evidence for the Prophet one. No, no, we didn't ask about the Prophets. Wait a minute, what you mean by the Prophets one? Yeah, I didn't get to that. When we, go on, when, we, when we get to that, you bring the evidence for that one. Inshallah. It's okay. It's okay. You can use it for the Quran. But we'll wait till we get to that one. What was the evidence for the second mithaq? The one in the born in the... When we in the, come out of the, the wounds of our mother. What is the proof of that? It's a Quran. Qur'ani or Dalilu Sunnah? Uh, no, no. I want evidence. I'm asking for the evidence for it. Yes. All of Adam's children? No, that's not an evidence. Evidence is what Allah says in the Quran. And what's in the Sunnah of the Prophet and the consensus of the Sahaba? The, no, that's not evidence. The evidence we gave and establish yourself for the religion being Hanifa, completely turned away, turned away from other than Allah, and embarking totally towards Allah. This is the natural disposition in which Allah created mankind upon it. There you that's the, that's the head uh, man, the aspect of proof. And there's no changing for the creating of Allah. So Allah created that in us. That's the proof for when you come out of your mother. And also the hadith. Every child, newborn baby is born upon the fitrah. That's the proof in the sunnah. But the ayah for, the, for this proof is فَأَقِمْ وَجَهَكَ لِلدِّينَ Allah, how are you going to tell you this if you're not alive yet? فَأَقِمْ and establish وَجَهَكَ yourself لِلدِّينِ for the religion Hanifa, Being Hanif. Here go the point of evidence. Then fitra in which Allah created mankind upon it. He created them. Meaning he came out of your womb like that. That's the hadith of shahid fil ayah. That's the proof in the verse. Okay? Isn't that the same thing as he, when he says he created mankind except for what to worship him? No. It's not the same. That's telling you why he created you. He ain't telling you what he put in you. It's telling you why you were created. That's not what he put in you. Uh, so those the proof And the last one Mithaq al-thalith What's the proof? This yani Ja irsal al-rusul Wa iqamat al-hujjah Wa iqamatihim al-hujjah Ala khalq 
um, the sending of messengers and them establishing of arguments. What's your what's the proof? That's a proof. Surah Al Baqarah, where Allah Taala says, He is the one who has sent prophets and messengers in order. That they may as, as bringers of glad tidings and warnings But the evidence we actually quoted That's one of it That We didn't quote that one But it's the same meaning The evidence we actually quoted was Rusulan mubashirina mundirina Li alla yakuna linnasi hujjatun ba'dir rusul That's a more clearer evidence But that's the evidence also Where Allah Ta'ala says Rusulun yani huwa mansub that Allah has sent messengers as bringers of glad tidings and warners for the bringers of glad tidings for those who follow them and warners of the hellfire for those who reject that message in order that they this shahid in order that they will not have no arguments Allah against Allah after them after messengers have come so this mithaq Al Akhir Mithaq at Bitafsilu Tatbiq Hadihi Fitra. So this third covenant is the requirement for you to accept the message and it's come to clarify how you implement that belief. Because as we said, the intellect cannot comprehend how to worship Allah. But it's enough for you to understand. In your natural position that you worship Allah alone But how? We don't know The messenger of Allah was Every messenger didn't know how to worship Allah Till revelation came As Allah Ta'ala said to the Prophet And he found you astray And he guided you And what question we asked last time Does this mean the Prophet was a kafir? He was misguided because he didn't know. As Allah says, Ma You didn't know what the book was. Right. iman. You didn't know what iman was. But Allah revealed to him to understand that. But he always stayed, every prophet stayed upon their fitrah. No prophet went out of their fitrah. Every time the Messenger of Allah was invited to do some ma'asi, some act of disobedience or some shirk, Allah caused him to fall unconscious. Before he became the messenger of Allah Because he didn't know And they invited him He was against it He wasn't with it But he was kind of forced to invite And every time he went for it Allah caused him to fall unconscious So This is the That was the question Question number seven What is the meaning of Aqidah Creed Linguistically Fadbal Okay. A what? To tie it to, to a knot that is tied. Now, that leads us to the question. He said it means to tie, it means a knot, a, tr a strongly tied knot. That's haqida from the word aqad, which means to tie. And it also means a contract. Because when you make a contract with somebody, it is a firmly established. Likewise, that's why the word aqd is used for a contract also. The marriage of a, of a marriage contract is aqdun ghaliyul. A very strong, powerful contract. What is the meaning? Okay, so now that leads us to question number eight. What did the Salaf use the word Aqidah to represent? Why did the Salaf use the word Aqidah to represent our beliefs? Limada, Lima, Istamala, as Salaf al Salih, Kalimatul Aqidah. The word aqidah li imanina. Why did the Salaf use the word aqidah to represent our beliefs? Why you think base is connected to the meaning? Now why? It has a strong connection of worship and Allah. You're making a contract to be obedient to Allah based on Quran and Sunnah. You're that's true. I didn't say that, but that's true. I, I I wanted to say that in the class, but I didn't mention that. That's true though. The no, that is the answer. That's part of the answer. Connect, connect one's heart to Allah. Thank you. That's the main one. But it's it's the fact that when something is tied down and firm, uh -huh. 
Right. It's unremoved. Like, you ever try to take a loose a, a strongly tied knot? That's like di difficult, almost impossible. You know, sometimes it is impossible. You just cut it. Man, I can't get to cut that knot up out of there. Right? Your belief's supposed to be firm in your heart like that. Inremovable. Jasm. It must be firm. Unshakable. That's why the six pillars of Iman, Arkanul Iman, the Sitta, the six pillars of Iman, La Yajuzu and Tashukkafi is not permissible to doubt any of it. Doubt in it cause disbelief. So that has to be firm in the breast. And if it's not, it's not your aqidah yet. Mm. This is why all of the prophets came. They came to correct the, what's been created in your heart. To replace it, to be created with that belief in the six pillars of Iman. And all that which is related to your belief system. Is that clear? So this is why the scholars, because if you, you won't find the word aqidah. You will not find it in any text from the book of Allah and the Sunnah of His Messenger in relation to the word aqidah being used to your creed. This is by the kalam, the statements of the ulama and the salaf. Of the salaf. They use this term because it coincides with what's supposed to be unwavering in your heart. Just like a tanat that is tied or a contract is made. It's that confident you have made with Allah tabarak wa ta'ala through the messengers of Allah. You see? Is that clear? So that answers all our questions and we finally go to the class. <laughs> SubhanAllah. <laughs> so inshallah ta'ala, akhi read from la wa la sharika lahu. Oh, you need a microphone. InshaAllah. We have to recap on these things because the goal of this class is it to be firmly in you brothers and sisters This is our aqidah That's why I add so much details to this class The next paragraph? Yes, which says Wala sharika la. Okay. Then going on to Moving on Li Wala li Okay, stop there. Translation of that is you could read the translation too for what you just read. Last Sharika la Translated the word Sharik. I transliterated. Translate. I mean, I put it to Arabic there. From there. Uh, he has no part. There's no partners for them. He is the first, and there is no beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, to his firstness, and he is the last. There is no end to his lastness. Tawakkuf. Stop there. We're going to talk about that. La Sharik and there is no partners for him. There is no partners for him. This, of course, is talking about shirk. Associating partners with Allah. Shirk is da'watu ghayru lahi, da'watu lahi wa ghayru. Calling on Allah and worshipping Allah and other than Allah. Ma'Allah, with Allah. Okay, that's shirk. You're giving the creation a right or whatever you may think, whether that be an abstract thing or it be ma'nawiyan, abstract. Or it be hisi and it be tangible. If you give it the right of Allah, then this is shirk. Or you worship something along with Allah, this is shirk. Um, and Allah Ta'ala doesn't share in his creating, his right of creating with no one. He doesn't share in his right of worship with no one. La yusharikuhu fi khalqihi shay'an. Shay'un. Nothing shares with him in his creating. Wala fi ibadati, nor in the worship of him. So we say, does not share with him a sharik, a partner. Man lahu nasibun min ashay. Ma lahu nasibun min He has nothing that shares with him or equal to him whatsoever. And we believe shirk is two types. What is the two types of shirk? The first shirk is shirk al akbar. 
Major shirk. And what is major shirk? It is an taj'ala ma'allahi ilahan akhar sawa'a. What you say? Um, believing in idols, like worshipping idols? That's part of it. We go more general meaning. Shirk, fadda. So another type of shirk is like when they're asking for like Muhammad for something. They're not like, they're not saying he's God, but they're asking somebody else for something. The intermediary. Yeah. For something that is only the right of Allah. Yeah. The more general meaning of shirk is to make with Allah other deities. Yeah. Having equal rights to Allah. Whether that be an angel or a messenger or someone who we deem as a saint that's close to Allah. Yeah. Waliyan. Whether that be Shamsun, the sun, or whether that be the moon, the qamar. Hajar a rock, Bashar on a human being, Ma'nawiyan, whether it be something abstract, all of that, if you give that right with Allah, that's shirk, and that removes you, shirk al akbar, yukhriju kamin al milla, it removes you from the religion of Islam. It nullifies all deeds. Major shirk, this is the difference between major shirk and minor shirk. It nullifies all deeds. Right. So Allah has no shirik. It nullifies all these major shirk. As Allah Ta'ala, as we mentioned before in Surah Al-Zumar, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ It has been truly revealed to you, Muhammad. وَإِلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ And to those who came before you, مِنْ قَبْلِكَ in ashrak that if you Muhammad commit shirk, la yahbatanna amaluk, your deeds will be invalidated, every one of them. Wala takunanna min al khasirin. You will be of the losers. Truly, you will be of the losers. That's the messenger of Allah. Wa man duna, wa man duna, and whoever is less than him, and of course, whoever is less than him. Al bab al awla man duna. Firstly, it's going to be those who's less than the Prophet of Allah, and that's everyone. So, this is shirk in your heart, brothers and sisters in Islam. You can commit major shirk with your mouth, with your heart, which is the worst form. And you can commit major shirk with your statements. Calling on another deity along with Allah. Like the Christians calling on Isa. That's major shirk with your tongue. For example, making dua to other than Allah. That's marriage of shirk with your tongue, your statements. Sacrifice of Allah within Allah. Then you have shirk in your amal, in your actions. An action of major shirk, an example of major shirk in your action is sujudu li ghayrillah, prostrating to other than Allah. Okay? That's an example of shirk in your actions. Uh, then you got minor shirk, shirk al asghar. Shirk al asghar just nullify the deed that you're doing. Yubatilu al amalu yu'amalu fihi shirk al asghar. Walisa bi mubatilan al amalu kullu. Minor shirk nullifies the deed that you're committing that is minor shirk. But it don't removes all of your deeds. Nullify all of your deeds. An example of that in your statements. Is to say, Laulallahu, if it wasn't for Allah, wa fulan, and such and such. If I come up to Amin, I say, Amin, he helped me with something. I say, if it wasn't for Allah and you, brother, this would have never happened. This shirking your statements. Because I'm, in my sentence, I'm making Allah helping me, him helping me equal. We supposed to say, Laulallahu, thumma fulan. If it wasn't for Allah and then you, and then you, okay, this is not shirk in your statements, but this is minor shirk if you do, if you equal that action. That's an example of minor shirk in your statements. An example of minor shirk, shirk al asghar fil qulub. An example of minor shirk in your heart is shirk al khafi, hidden shirk. That is, that's another example for the I was going to mention that, better call fikum. 
an uh, example of, of hidden shirt, and this is the worst, because hidden shirt can be fall in the category of major shirt and minor. It depends on the person. It's minor shirt, hidden shirk is riyah. Doing your deeds to be seen of others was sum'ah for fame and notoriety. This is scary. An example of that, I'm making salah. And I'm reciting. And I got a beautiful voice. And I hear the people affected from behind me in the salah. Whom muta'athiruna bi tilawati. Whom if they affected by my recitation. So I make it more beautiful. If my intentions was because of the people, then it falls into hit and shirk and it creeps up on you, you don't even realize it. But if I beautify it more because I want to draw them closer to Allah, then it's for Allah. It's on hasab and niyyah. It's based upon your intentions. Actions only judged by their intentions. And everyone shall get what they intended. So understanding that this is an example. Mani Shirk and the Sheikh mentioned also for see, or we mentioned also doing another form of hidden shirk is doing your deed for notoriety, for fame. And this is one of the things like actors. Their life is shirk. This shirk al khafi is is all in them. Uh, they everything they do is to be famous. They go and reveal their sins and their faults because it gets them more famous. It's all to get more notoriety and more money. It gets them paid. This is why somebody like Jada Pinkett and Will Smith have their little show where they talk about their inner sins and what they do because it's going to get them more money, going to give them more notoriety. Another example of this, I'm going to answer your question. Another example of this is students of knowledge seeking Praise. more fame, more notoriety. When the Salaf Kanu Yakrahuna Tasaddu, the Salaf used to hate initiating putting themselves out there. Bel Kanu Yukhfi Amarahum. Wakhafu Min. They used to hide their deeds and they used to fear from becoming known. And many students want to put themselves out there. And it shows in many manifestations. One of his manifestations is giving fatwa early in your dawah. This is dangerous. You find our seller fleed from this. He used to come to one of the sahaba. And you want a fatwa? He would direct you to someone else among the sahaba. Sahabi Athani, you come to the Aladi Yuhal Anta Muhal Ilay, the one who you've been directed to, and he won't answer your question. You hey look at Akhar. He sent you to another companion. He sent you to another companion. So you wind up back at the companion that you first asked. This is how the Sahaba were. Then he'll answer your question if he knew the answer. They feared from Tasaddur, becoming noticed. Having notoriety, notoriety And to this very day we see the ulama the same way The ulama that's upon his tikama They avoid fatawa publicly oftentimes, And they tell you Ask the major scholars Who make public fatwa And this is something that we should practice Because of the fear of Shirk al-Khafi and, and, and what we find What student, new people of knowledge do when they're in the beginning stages of their da'wah And they have the knowledge to answer the questions If they make it public They say write your question down And we will answer in a specific setting After he research it and look up the answer He may come with fatawa from other scholars That's major more greater than him Or he'll tell you with his research He just don't do like a major scholar Who's been around for a long time Where he answer off the fly and allow his fatawa to be spread all over the world. But the ones that of lesser knowledge, they will allow that to happen to be spread is if they they research the question because they fearing the status. And there's no one there, and plus two, there's no one around for them to, to, to aid the people in this fashion. Now, what was your question? So when someone is showing people that they're doing something right, and immediately, uh, 
as soon as they're do, uh, done doing it, they do something else. It's completely the opposite. Mm. I forgot the word. You mean where they not practicing what they're inviting the people to? Yeah, they're not practicing. No, we're not going to say that's a hypocrite. That's the attribute of it. It's a form of hypocrisy. We're not going to say they are a hypocrite. That's one of the characteristics of a hypocrite. That this action is blameworthy. This is actually what the seller used to tell us. Don't be so gun ho to take from. Don't be so zealous to take from everyone who teaches the, you know, call to the dean. Wait, see if their actions coincide with their, their statements. And if they do, love them and draw them near to you. But if you see their actions in opposition to what they're calling to, then keep beware of them and keep them distant from you. Because what they're showing you, that's what they're showing you. And what they're hiding is worse. Mm. What they're hiding is worse. So... This issue of shirk falls into these kinds. And the sheikh mentioned another form of shirk. I'm going to have to move on because we don't have much time. Inshallah, we save the questions for afterwards after this point. Um, the, 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 another form of shirk the sheikh had mentioned, which is shirk of halaf, swearing by other than Allah. But this minor shirk in the tongue, in the mouth, is saying, I swear by my mother's grave, for example. I know, every whole lot of people do that. I swear by my mother's grave, or I swear by the Kaaba. I swear by the Quran and things of this nature. We only swear by Allah and Allah only one has the right to swear by his creation. That's another form. So this is the different categories of shirk. And the safety from shirk is by al irtisami bit tawheed. By protecting yourself with learning tawheed. Bifahmi sahihi li nususihi min al kitabi wa sunnah. And having a proper correct understanding of the text from the book and the sunnah. Having the proper understanding of the text from the Quran and the Sunnah was said ala nahaj salaf al ummah and traversing upon the methodology of the predecessors of this ummah. None of that is possible without acquisition of knowledge about how they worship the law, how they practice the deen. This is what is required of us, walhamdulillah. Next thing we went off, he mentioned that the author said, Laysa li awaliyatihi. There is not for his firstness, meaning Allah's firstness, a beginning. And it is not for his ending, his endlessness, an ending. There's nothing, and there's not for his endlessness, an ending or ceasing. Okay? This statement means Allah don't have a beginning, no end. nor does He have an ending. He is Al Hayyul Qayyum. He is the ever living and caused everything else to exist. And He exists, He caused Himself to exist. Okay? That's why we say Allah can. He was existing when there wasn't no, nothing else but him in existence. As the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned, before he created everything, it was nothing but empty space. So Allah was with his attributes even before he created everything. Right? He was what he was even before there wasn't no place. Wakana Kabila Khalk al Khalk. And he was when there was no create before he created the creation. So this here, when we say there is not for his oneness a beginning and for his endlessness an ending or ceasing, this is indicated towards A hadith of the Prophet and an ayah from, from an ayah from the Quran. And before we quote that ayah, what we understand is this quality of Allah is khilaf al makhluqat. It's the opposite of his creation. It's the opposite of his creation. And for everything Allah created, it has a beginning. And it has an ending. And all of that is a proof for the Jalal Rabb, the sublimeness of our Lord, and his uniqueness from everything else. 
As this reality is proven in the statement of Allah in Surah Al-Hadid, verse number three, Allah Taala says, "Huwa al-awwal wal-akhir wal-zahir wal-baatin," that He is the first, the last. He is the above, and He is the hidden. Oh, He is the parent, and He is the hidden. Wa huwa, and He is. Be kulli shayin over all single things, alim all knowing. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in a, a dua that he used to make when the Prophet alayhi sallallahu sallam used to make his dua at night time. There's a dua that clarifies this ayah from Surah Al Hadid, and it's important for us to know. This is where this is where the author got this from. The statement from the Quran. Ibn Abi Zayd al Qayrawan, he got this from the ayah, this ayah we mentioned. And the hadith clarifies the ayah because the messenger was sent to clarify the Quran. The Prophet used to say in his dua, Allahumma, O oh Allah, Antal Awalu, you are the first, wa laysa qablaka shay, and there's nothing before you. There was nothing before you because he didn't have it before. Until awwalu, O oh Allah, you are the first. Wa laysa qabla kashayn, there's nothing before you. Wa anta al akhiru, and you are the last. Wa laysa ba'da kashayn, and there's nothing to come after you. Because Allah don't have an ending. Wa anta zahiru, and you are the apparent. Wa laysa fawqa kashayn, and there's nothing above you. Wa anta al batin, and you are the hidden. Wa laysa duna kashay, and nothing is hidden away from you. That's a very important belief that we must have as Muslims. And then the Prophet went on to say in the du'a, because this is du'a he was making. Iqdi dain anna dain. Oh Allah, fulfill from us our debts. Wa aghnina min min al fakr. And enrich us from your from poverty, make us self-sufficient from poverty, and meaning being in need of others, other than Him. And this hadith, alhamdulillah, is narrated by Muslim from the hadith of Abu Hurairah radiallahu taala anhu. This hadith illustrates something. Let's go back. You want to take notes on this point? When Allah says, "Who al awwal?" He is the first, and there's nothing before Him. Yani. This proves the fact that Allah was before everything existed And there was nothing before him, he was the first This proves that he is the oldest And there was nothing older than him That's why we say he's the first, there's nothing to come before him oh, We don't understand it, we had a beginning and it was things before us, everybody, even Adam. And when we say Al Akhir, he is the last, and there is nothing after him, Yani Dalun ala Bakaihi wa Abadiyatihi. This is a proof for his continuous remaining. Nothing will die, he will never die. And that he will never he will be forever. But everything has to die. Even the angel of death, when he takes the last soul, Allah gonna take his soul. And he gonna say, Man al mulk al yawm. Who does the dominion belong to today? Ain't it Jabbarin al Mutakabirin? We are the conquerors and the arrogant ones. And nobody will answer because everything will be dead. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Anna. I am Al-Wahid Al-Qahar The one The irresistible and all powerful So Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala He will remain So he doesn't It means he will remain When we say Allah is Vahid He is apparent Meaning And there's nothing above him This shows Uluwuhu Allah's loftiness And his aboveness Above all things Abstractly wise In, in, in an abstract manner and also tangible, tangibly, physically, he's above everything, and in power and in insight and in minds, he's above it all, encompassing of it all. So this is showing his highness, wa'adhamatihi, 
and his magnificence is above every other magnificence. Okay? When we say he's law here. He who al batin, him being the hidden, that there's nothing dunahu less than him or hidden from him, yani, hadha dalun ala dunuwihi wa qurbihi. This proves how close Allah is, how near he is to you, and close is his closeness to you. Now, I'll hold your questions for afterwards. I'm going to finish this, inshallah, Kyle. I'm sorry. So that's the thing. Then the author goes on and reads for the for the ikra for the rest. Hold your question. Write it so you don't forget it. What was read the next thing? La ya belughu kunha from here. I'm talking to you, I mean. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, read from the next thing. La ya belughu kunha sifatihi. La la ya belughu kunha. Down, stop there. Read the English. Neither his es neither his essence nor his nature can be described nor encompassed by his creation. Stop there. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned La yabluq We translate it cannot reach Yani la yudrik Cannot reach Kunha Yani ghaya Wa haqiqa Wal kayfiyya That nothing can reach Or comprehend The essence The core Of His attributes Those who want to describe him No one can do that now we're gonna get linguistic with that point. Wala yuhitu bi amrihil mutafakkirun. Nor can encompasses those who reflect and ponder over him, his affair cannot compre cannot encompass his the affair of Allah. Let's talk about that. And we're gonna end with that, inshallah ta'ala. And that is no one is able to reach the reality of Allah's attributes. Because there's nothing resembling in him in his creation. There's nothing like unto him. There's nothing to be compared to be like him, right? This is, you notice he says Sifa. In Arabic, there's a difference between Sifa. This is for the Arabic people speaking people. And also for us, because Arabic is Ghani, Ghaniya. Well, Logatuna in Kilizia, Fakira. Arabic is rich and English is poor in comparison. Yeah, in film in comparison. So there's a difference in Arabic because he says here, La Yabalugu kunha sifati. He didn't say La Yabalugu kunha wasfihi al wasifun. He didn't say that. He did he he said cannot reach and obtain the essence of his sifa, his attributes and qualities, those who describe him. He didn't say wasf. He used the word sifa because there's a difference between sifa and wasf. Sifa, no questions after we finish. Sifa, it is the word sifa, which we translate to mean attribute, like we would translate wasp. We only got one word for that in English. But sifa in Arabic is sifa tun ka imatul bil mausuf. A sifa is the established qualities. That a person is described with Amin is dark skin He's, he's a thin brother And his beard is short he, he's a, That's established about him Because I see it oh, gotcha. I, You got established description Because I see it I have one if you see it So that's a sifa That's a true attribute that we see Wasf is different We only can do with Allah is wasf, wasf. We can't do sifa because we can't see, we haven't seen Allah, and we don't know nothing to be like Allah. We only can say, we only can do what? Describe Allah according to what He mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah. That's it. And what the Arabic language of those words mean. That's it. But the essence of it, not possible. And that's the that's why the author says Sifa. He didn't say was. Was kalam al wasif al qawl al wasif. 
when we make a description of something, that's based off what a person said about someone. If I describe to you how someone looked, how does sister look? Oh, she's beautiful, Achi. She got long black hair. She got a pretty sharp nose. But you don't really know what it truly looked like till you see her. So I'm describing her to you. So that's all we can do about Allah. We can't describe his sifa. We can't get to the essence of his sifa, of his attributes. Can't get to the core of it. Can't get to it because we haven't seen him and we don't know nothing like Allah. Absolutely. So this is the difference between wasf and sifa, okay? Is that clear? Like if I said to you, for example, of a wasp, I say, man, this, tr this tree, look at that tree, isn't it beautiful? That's inclusive to a tuluhu, a duardu. You want to know its length and its width. We don't know that about Allah, so it's, we don't know his sifa, but we know his wasp is he big, the biggest. How is that bigness? Allah knows best. Okay, is that clear? So when we talk about, so we call this sifa, it don't give ismul ma'na, the name of the meanings. But this is what sifa, the, the details that. Detail specific description. Is that clear? So when the author is saying this, this is what he's arriving at. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And that when we talk about the Sifa of a, then he mentions, The wala yuhitu bi amrihi al-mutafakkirun. And cannot encompass his affair. Those who ponder. What is the Amr? The Amr of Allah are two types. The affair or the order of Allah is two types. Okay? The first type is Amr al Kauni. The those commands of Allah that are in the universe that we can see. And then you got Al Amr al Shar'i. Those commands and affairs that is only in his legislation. What he commands in the legislation. As an example of the Amr al Kauni, his um, universal orders Allah Ta'ala says Inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsani For example Allah says indeed Allah commands with justice And being excellent To the end of that verse This is related to Shari His, his legislative I mean uh, Allah's legislative Allah in his legislative affair Ma safihi illa ma yuhibbuhu Allah Only in it is what Allah loves Wa yarda And is pleased with in his orders, that's legislation, so that legislative wise. But his universal laws, could be in it what Allah loves and what he hates, because these are commands that he ordered to exist for a reason. It may, like Iblis, for example. Mm -hmm. Shaitan exists and Allah doesn't like him, but he allowed him to exist. Right. You could just go like this and he's gone. Of course. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is his universal command. Where he allowed certain things to exist And no one can really encompass Why? Ponder with the mind Encompass His uh, commandments right. And his affair Okay Your own bodies We're still discovering things about the uh, a Command of creating Adam I have not created mankind in concept of what is this creation? We still trying to figure things out about our own creation and the earth that we live in. We are limited. So we can encompass his command in totality. Now, better Allah figure. So when we talk about the affairs of Allah, universal laws, that's related to his rububiyyah. Yani Allah. It's related to what his actions have done in the creating of this universe and causing life and causing death and providing and, you know, bringing this universe into existence. That's his universal laws that we can see. No, this is as we refer, we pass that. We talk about his amr, his commanding. That we can encompass, those who think can encompass his command and his affair. Okay? The affair of Allah Ta'ala. And this is what the affair is referring to. His universal affairs and commandments. And his legislative commandments No one can truly encompass the totality We can always find out what's the benefit of why we're not supposed to do this And do that, for example Why do we make tayammum the way we make it? Why? We don't know Why do we do, why do we make, we make Was mesh ala khafain Khufain, when we make, wipe over our socks Why the top and not the bottom? We don't know the wisdom behind that Right Like, I live in that of Lao Kana a deen if the religion was based off of 
العقل the intellect لمسحنا تحت الخف we will wipe under the of the sock instead of folk instead of above it if it was based if this religion was based on an intellect because that, that's what get dirty when you walk but we don't wipe on the bottom of, I even have a said that we don't wipe on the bottom why wipe on the top the wisdom why Allah knows best so we can't truly encompass Allah's commandments we're limited and Allah does that for a reason like for example Alif Lam Mim what does that mean? Allah knows best. Because He wants you to know. You only. Who are you, Dariku al Abusar? Well, are you to Dariku al Abusar? He encompasses all sights, but no sight can encompass Him. Is that clear? Hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barik ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa shma'in wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Next Saturday. Assalamu alaikum. Thank <laughs> you.